Welcome everyone to our daily Forex market analysis call and this is in preparation for trading on November 1st, not 31st for November 1st. Uh, 2017. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Trading is a risky business, so please be careful with your money. So we will start off as usual with our Forex factory calendar here. <coughs> so in terms of the news today, we had positive data for the U.S., but um, it did not um, so Joey, actually maybe my kids in the background, they're kind of getting ready for Halloween here. Is it really loud? Just give me a sec. Yeah, I have, um, I have uh, it's Halloween here. So ki kids are starting to come to the door. So there will be some background noise. So I'll try to get this. Let's go through it quickly. So um, apologies for that. <laughs> um, all right. So in terms of the news today, we had positive data out of the U.S., but that didn't really help things. So um, very important um, with the month end flows. We'll, we'll take a look at that actually when we get to the charts. But we had here, we had positive data for the New Zealand dollar. Uh, New Zealand numbers came in positive. As a result, we just saw New Zealand dollar jump up. And coming in now, we are getting into important part of the week here. We have manufacturing PMI numbers for the British pound coming up in the morning. We have ADP employment chain. So these are the pre non-farm payroll numbers. And then we have PMI numbers, which will be important. Very, very important today. <laughs> sorry, um, very, very important tomorrow will be the FOMC. So that's at 2 p.m. Um, New York time. So this will be very important because now we have heard that Yellen won't be the, the Fed chair anymore. So she's getting replaced. And um, at this point, um, now we are into November already. And um, basically the market is looking uh, towards the Fed to see what their plans are in terms of the, uh, the interest rate hikes. So they were supposed to do three. We have already seen two, but the third one has um, gotten pushed back. And um, that's one of the reasons we saw US dollar uh, sort of uh, lose its momentum today as well. So there were two reasons. One was month end flow. So usually what happens um, for the month end is, um, and it's very important that we keep our position sizes very, very small trading into month end or like Faz said this morning, go with the demo account because unexpected things can happen. So everybody who's been in these trades, they need to close these trades, like the big fund managers and stuff, so they can book a profit. And in order to do that, the trade will be in the opposite direction of what the trend is. So that's one thing. And then going into FOMC, um, a lot of market participants would um, step aside prior to such a big event because they don't know what uh, what the Fed would say, right? What their reaction would be. So that's why uh, we tend to see some, um, some, or we saw some of the stuff that we saw today with a lot of these crosses. So keep that in mind. Okay, so going into, so... <laughs> Excuse me. So that's what we're looking for tomorrow. Biggest thing will be the Fed statement. And then we do have trade balance for um, Australia and also Bank of Canada, Governor Pola speaking. So this one, um, it's, it's likely to be pretty much the same stuff that has been said before. So it may not have a big impact, um, but definitely the FOMC will and the trade balance will, PMI numbers will have an impact. So all of those things will be important going into um, tomorrow. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on. So here we are in this um, bit of a range here that we have sat in for the last um, two, three days here. So now we are at the top of the range for Euro US dollar here. 16, 1.1665 is the number that we had talked about yesterday. So all day today, price sort of hung around. See how small a move it is for Euro. So this tends to happen prior to um, FOMC. So that's what we are seeing seeing here. So as long as price stays, so same thing from yesterday, as long as price stays below 1.1665, we are bearish. 
Um, okay, so um, as long as price is below 1.1665, we are bearish on this once the price does go up. So basically with the FOMC, if FOMC or the Fed is hawkish, then we're likely to see something like this, like this. So Euro will drop, but if they are they're dovish. So basically, if they say, oh, we are going to watch for the data, we may not do another interest rate hike this year, then we could see a move all the way back into this because a negative uh, Fed statement will have a bigger impact than a positive one with. Very good, Hamid. Okay, sounds good. So let's... Um, so that's our Euro outlook. So let's take a look at pound here. So pound uh, was one of those things that benefit today. We had a big daily move to the upside. We are into this support and resistance area. So we were bullish and there was another bullishness. So I was looking for a reaction off of the highs, which we didn't quite get. So we are, we are quite bullish here. So looking for a further move to the upside, the target would be 133.50 to the upside. So this looks quite bullish at the moment. Um, so pound dollar is bullish. Aussie here, Aussie has um, had um, a bearish day. So I'm looking for another continuation move to the downside. So we saw a reaction off of this support and resistance. Nice yeah. move to the downside. Yeah. Now looking for 7620 yeah. level. Yeah. And beyond that, looking for 7600. Now keep, <coughs> excuse me, keep in mind what we talked about with the Fed, right? So if the FOMC statement is hawkish, for um, for the U.S. dollar, that means this is likely to push up. So all U.S. dollar crosses could, could sorry, they could push down if it's positive for the U.S. dollar, which means if it's hawkish. But if it's dovish, which means it's negative um, towards the economy, they talk negative about the economy, or they want to wait on data, and they or they say we will wait and see till December to think about the interest rate hike or something like that, or they say we, it's going to get pushed back, all of that will be negative for the U.S. dollar. So it will be considered dovish, which means this could go up. New Zealand U.S. dollar, we saw a big push up just now because of the, the data that came out. The employment numbers came out really positive. It is into resistance now over here. So let's take a look at the daily move here. So a daily, based on the daily candle close, we were bearish here, but now we have seen uh, the big bullish um, data come out. As a result of that, this has pushed up higher. So going into... Um, into our next day here. So this, this is sort of what I'm looking at. We are into resistance here. It's kind of wiped out all of this. So two things could happen. One, we have an inefficient move. So inefficient move could get filled and price could come all the way down. But if it maintains its bullishness, then we could see price go higher. So let's say it pulls back into this level here, 68.80. Then we could see a move like that all the way up. And if it breaks through, then we could go all the way even into this next support and resistance um, area into about 0 0.700. So, so those are the couple of options. So the important thing will be to see, does it hold above this 0 0.6880 level? If it does, then um, we are targeting 69.12 level and then further up into 0 0.700. So that's the, uh, that's sort of the, play for a New Zealand US dollar. Dollar CAD here, we had seen a big inefficient move. It hasn't been filled yet, but we haven't seen the break of the highs. So here we are. The daily candle close is definitely bullish. So the next target will be higher. So right now we have this little triangle, um, ascending triangle going up. So which usually means that price, if it coils over here, it could break to the upside. So it is pushing into the highs. If it pushes higher, we are looking at 130.20 level, which is the next support and resistance level. Um, another scenario is that it doesn't do that with all FOMC and everything else. It could just 
bounce down from here. So this is what we're looking for um, in that case, back into the range into 127.80 level. So those are the two scenarios with all the US dollar crosses. We do have to keep in mind FOMC tomorrow. Euro pound, very, so the last few days we've been bearish on this, very, very bearish candle close. So looking for a further move to the downside here. The next target would be um, 8,700. So this is the next support and resistance level here. Um, last few days, every day we are getting a uh, bearish daily close. So looking for a continued move to the downside. Euro Swiss franc here. So this one, uh, we had a bullish candle close here. So um, looks like it wants to break higher. So we are looking for further bullishness. The target would be 1.1650. And above that, then we are looking at um, 1.1700. So right now it has this uh, bullishness to it, which is continuing. So that's the trend line here. So we're looking for basically price to go up higher. Um, I would watch out for 1.1650 because it could come into resistance here. But overall though, the trend is to the upside here. Pound Swiss franc, big pound moves um, today. Huge move in this one. So it was coming into resistance over here, broke through the high, went all the way up. So now we are, we need to look at this weekly move here so we can see what's going on. So the next target here is 13400. Prior to that, we could see price go into this 133. 38 level and then we are looking at 13400 so this looks quite bullish see how it is breaking up to the upside so euro swiss is similar uh move here not exactly the same but similar so <coughs> so we have we kind of held above this support and resistance level broke through the high now we are bullish on pound Swiss franc. Dollar Swiss franc, um, this is pushing up higher as well. We have had a bullish candle close, just like I marked down these levels for pound Swiss franc here. Just like that, dollar Swiss franc has held above this level. So this gives it a bullish bias now. So this bearish bias that we had yesterday, it did not play out. Um, so now with the bullish candle close, we are looking for a further move to the upside. So the target here would be 1.0038 level. So this looks bullish. Uh, pound cat here. Actually, pound cat has turned quite bullish here with like just like all the US, sorry, um, all the pound dollar crosses. So the next target here is 71.7200 1 which is this next level of support and resistance. So this looks bullish as well. Pound yen, um, just like other pound crosses, this is um, this is into so big close. Uh, first of all, big move to the upside in British pound. Um, now we are into resistance though, so do keep that in mind, uh, which means we could head into trouble. So we have to watch out for this one fifty one point five zero level because if price does not go to the other side of it it could do one of these, right? Because look at how many times price has rejected this level. Uh, but overall though, daily bias is to the upside. So once price clears this 150, 150 level, we're looking for 150 to 20 um, to, to the upside there. So that is looking <coughs> bullish right now. Euro yen, that is looking yeah. bullish as well. Uh, could not hold below that previous support resistance level. We have closed higher. Next target would be 133.20. So the bias is to the upside in Euro Yen. Aussie Yen. Aussie Yen was very neutral close for the day. So at this point, it could go either way. So we need to be open in this case. So the target to the upside would be 87.50 level and target to the downside would be 86.60 level, which is the bottom um, of this here. So not a very clear, um, not a very clear setup in this one at the moment. Okay, last one, dollar yen, uh, bullish close for the day. So we're looking for a further move to the upside. Um, in this one, the target would be 
So that's our target to the upside. All right, that's all. Um, any questions or comments, anything to add to this? Can you guys hear the scary pumpkin in the back background? Okay, perfect. So let's call it a wrap. So I will see you guys. Um, I'll be back for the London session. Um, and it's a little bit later because a week, uh, the timings have shifted. So it will be 2.30. Um, so 2.30 to 3 a.m. is when I'll be at my desk, but London won't open um, for another. So it won't open till 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. Eastern. So just keep that in mind. So I will see you guys tomorrow then. Have a good night. Bye for now.